Is that wonderful or what? Wow. Yes. I hope this day, this worship time, this Christmas season is memorable for you. I will tell you a little secret. Not every Christmas is as memorable as others, and some are just way more memorable in the things that you look back at, the stories that stick with you, and the lessons you learn. One of my most memorable Christmases as a parent happened in 1990. It was the year that we had finished seminary. We had finished uh, a year of prestigious poverty as a fellow at, uh, at Emory. And we actually had our first house with a backyard. And so we had a four-year-old and a six-month-old. And I was so excited about we had a backyard. Santa Claus, you know, was coming to town. And Lisa and I picked out all the things that we wanted to give our kids. And we were so excited about um, a swing set. You know, that's, that's big stuff. When you've lived in condos and apartments and uh, seminary housing, you, you, you get there. So we were thrilled about that. And so we had uh, gone shopping, and we had ordered the perfect swing set and hidden it out, and, you know, so it would be a surprise on Christmas morning. But all that our four-year-old wanted that year was a Georgia Bulldogs football uniform. Now, I realize for some of you that is absolute sacrilege. You know, but that was, we were living in Albany, Georgia, and that just seemed like the right thing. So he was excited about that, and that's all he talked about. Well, we got my parents to take Dad and to, to uh, go back to their hometown so that Lisa and I could put together the swing set. You do know the three words that strike fear in the heart of every father, right? Some assembly required. There were more nuts and bolts and things with, than you can possibly imagine. But we waited and waited. We knew that they'd be gone, and we had all day on Christmas Eve to put our present together for our little one. We were so excited, and y'all, a cold front came through. It was 10 degrees. The coldest day in the history of Albany, Georgia. I realized why people moved to Florida, where it's 80 degrees in the week of Christmas. Well, we put it together. We worked all day running in and out and in and out. It took longer than we thought. We wound up having to go outside and to hit the lights of the car up on the swing set to put it all together. Christmas morning came. And sure enough, Santa Claus came through with the Georgia Bulldogs football uniform. Dad put it on. He was so happy. And so we said, son, I want you to come over to the window and and see, see what else may be out there. And he goes to the back window, and his eyes get about this wide. And he runs out into the backyard. He runs underneath the swing set, goes to the neighbor's dogs, and says, Wiley, Bo, I got my football uniform. <laughs> I mean, he never even saw it. He is not the first one for a gift to come and perhaps not see the significance of it. In John's Gospel, chapter 1, hear these familiar words. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and He was with God in the beginning. Through Him all things were made. Without him, nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of men. The light shines in darkness, but the darkness has not understood it. There came a man who was sent from God. His name was John. He's the source of the song of the Benedictus, our very first candle. <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, he, <clears throat> excuse me. There came from a uh, man who came was sent from God. His name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning that light, so that through him all men might believe. He himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light. The true light that gives light to every man was coming into the world. He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came. 
uh, to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become the children of God. Children born not of natural descent or of human decision or of a husband's will, but born of God. And then the familiar words. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. And we have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only who came from the Father, full of grace and full of truth. See, a big part of Christmas, a huge part of Advent, is noticing just who Jesus is. And sometimes we can be like the boy at Christmas who runs right under the gift and for all the trappings misses it. You see, we look at this and we understand that Jesus is the eternal one, had been around since the very beginning. In the beginning was the word. We understand the nature that, that everything that was is a part of his own creation. As in the beginning was the word and the word was God and the word was with God. He is eternal. But not only that, we began to see that he is revealed. The word, word, is the word logos in Greek, and it means to tell what something is. It is to use a word of uh, expression to say, if you want to know what God looks like, here it is. Here's the picture. He was revealed to us. Anything that we know of God is because God has provided his revelation and the ultimate revelation was that of the Son. He was not only revealed, he was promised. We find scripture after scripture, those that were read this morning by the Rivera family, the many scriptures of the Old Testament that point us to the star of Bethlehem. And even John the Baptist who came and says, look, I, I am not the light, I'm the one to give witness to the light, the one that has come to shine in the darkness. He was revealed, this text tells us. But sadly, he was also rejected. He came into his own, and his own received him not. They didn't see the light for what it was. You ever thought about that? Do you need to announce to somebody that the lights are on when you come in? It's self-evident. It's either the lights are on or they're not. If you're walking along the, uh, the waterfront at sunrise, one of the most beautiful things to do in St. Petersburg, you go along the, uh, the bayfront and you watch the sun come up. You don't have to announce, hey, the sun is up. Everybody there who's around it sees it. They know it, except for the blind. And you see, what we find out is the people to whom Jesus came were spiritually blind. He came into his own. His own received him not. They did not recognize him, the Scripture tells us. But he came out of love anyway so that we might know and that we might experience who God is through Jesus. He was not only eternal. He was not only revealed. He was not only promised. He was not only rejected, but he also was the one who was a saving one. That he came that we might have life and have light everlasting. He has come to us that we might know the glory of the Father to save us from our sin and to recognize the gloriousness of who he was and who he is. And that, I hope, this morning is the beauty of what we're participating in in music. Folks, the music is beautiful. The orchestration is, is phenomenal. The instruments, the voices, the leading it all comes together musically incredibly uh, beautiful, incredibly strong. But tucked within that message is the message of who Jesus is that we don't want to miss. Did you notice the very first song that was sung this morning? Unto us a child is given. The familiar words not only of Isaiah, but the familiar words of Handel's Messiah, which is a hallmark of the Christmas season. Ken Smith is a good friend of mine. Ken is a former football coach, longtime pastor, a great friend of Tony Dungy, one of the most influential people throughout Fellowship of Christian Athletes. 
But way back in the day, Ken was an offensive lineman for Baylor University, and he grew up in a suburb of Starkville, Mississippi. Now, that should tell you something. He's out in the country. Ken used to say that when we were kids, we lived so far out in the middle of nowhere that we had to go towards town to hunt. That's when you know that you grew up in the country. And so he shows up at Baylor University, offensive lineman, Mississippi kid, and he's there, and he makes friends with a music major who invites him to come to the chorale's presentation of Handel's Messiah. He'd never even heard of it, let alone heard it. So he shows up in his flip-flops and shorts and T-shirt. He would have fit right in in St. Petersburg back in the day. And he takes in the occasion of the night. Here's the music. His friend comes up to him later when he sees him and says, What did you think of the Messiah? To which in his uninformed way, Ken says, I reckon it is all right. And his friend, the musician, says, You rube. You idiot. You, you, you don't understand. You don't judge the Messiah. The Messiah judges you. That's true of the music, and it's true of the man. That the Messiah is the Messiah whether you recognize its musical beauty or not. And the Messiah is the Messiah even for those who do not recognize him and who receive him not. Our prayer this morning is through the music that we have shared and through the word that you have heard is that it becomes real and fresh to us that God is with us, Emmanuel. That he has come into this world that we might have light, that we might have life, and that we could recognize it for who it is. What he has come to do. For in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God, and the Word was with God. And he came... And he dwelt among us that we might know the glory of the Father in him, through him, by him, because of him. And that is what we have come this morning to worship. That is what we have come to celebrate, to experience. What you think of the Messiah? The music and the man is beyond wonder. Let it paint the picture for us. This is who he is. The one who is eternal. The one who was promised. The one who was revealed. The one who was rejected. The one who is still saving and is the perfect reflection of the glorious one. I hope this morning that we experience that fully. And beyond the music, we leave with the message of who Jesus is, the word that did become flesh and dwelt among us and still dwells in us. Join me in prayer. Our Father, we thank you for the privilege of coming together to worship you. We thank you for this music, what we have heard and what we're still about to hear. And Father, as we assemble and we turn our ears to this choir may we tune our hearts to you to let you speak to us and remind us of who you are remind us of why you came Emmanuel God with us may it be ever so on this day and all days that is my prayer my hope and my expectation and I make it in the strong name of the one who has come and still comes and will come again. Amen.
Amen. Thank you, choir. Before we close the service, uh, two reminders. One, uh, Christmas Eve service come this coming Saturday at 6 o'clock. And then after the service, after the benediction, join us for a meal and fellowship in Heritage Hall and the areas in the rear of the church. We would love to have you. Okay, in the student centers where they're going to be serving the food. And then we have a tent set up in the back for you to eat. No better benediction, a blessing to end this service than from the New Testament book of Jude. And now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling and make you stand in his presence blameless with great joy. To the only God our Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord, be all majesty, dominion, and authority before all times, now and forevermore. Amen. Have a great week.